Greetings from Potash Beach, Alabama. It's so good to be coming to you live on this beautiful, beautiful, <coughs> excuse me, beautiful Thursday. God has been and is good, and if we put our trust, dependence in Him, we can know that all things are possible through Him. If you got the Bible, let's do a little Bible study today in the book of Revelation. Now, I believe Revelation is very fast. Feeling what what is coming to pass so quick, but I'm not really wanting to talk about future events so much. But I want to talk about something that was a message that Jesus sent to one of the seven churches in Asia, and a message that applies to us today. And no, I'm not talking about the church of Laodicea today. In Philippians chapter two, verse one through seven. Jesus speaking said unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, Write, these things say of he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Know, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and how and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne and hast patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Man, this sounds like a good report so far, do I? I mean, here is a church of last episode. They are doing, it seems, everything right. They've got ministry going on. They have the spirit of the song with it. Well, those that come up and say, I'm apostles, they have to say, oh, nah, you need to go on. We know the works. They're, they're laboring, they're doing everything for God, they're doing everything for Jesus. They're probably giving to the poor, they're probably having all kinds of missions work going on. I mean, they are in ministry here, okay? Ministry in action. They are moving forward in everything, and so everything has to be right. So all that follows after this has to be a uh, has to be the Lord saying, "Hey, keep up the good work, uh, keep going like you're going, and all of this good stuff." I mean, they probably think, "Ah, oh, we just to really get some praise here," but no, it didn't happen that way. First four. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. They're doing everything right. They, they're doing ministry and everything. So, so what are they not doing right? He tells them. Because thou hast left thy first love. They've kind of forgot about Jesus. They forgot about the relationship that they were walking so hard for. Let's, let's go and finish up these verses. Remember therefore from whence thou hast up fallen. Repent and do thy first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place. Except thou repent. But this thou hast that this, this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. The Nicolaitans was uh, a false belief system, and about the best way to say this is to say it like this, they believed in spouse swapping. Spouse swapping. They believed in just changing partners, you know, and it was all right, and it wasn't a sin, and God 
Jesus said, that's no, that ain't right. He that help an evil, let him heal. What the Spirit say unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. But let's go back to verse 4 here. What did he have against you? Did they, he said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Did thou, because thou hast left thy first love. You know, there are many today that are in ministry and it's hard to imagine. Or that go to church and everything, and, but yet somewhere the love for Jesus seems to have gotten a little colder. Oh, they still love God, they still love Jesus, they still sing and everything and clap their hands and all these good things. For some real that love relationship seems to be getting dwindling. Colder and colder and colder. As a matter of fact, Jesus said in Matthew, Chapter 21, Matthew 24, I mean Matthew 24, verse 12, he said, speaking of the last days, that this is Christians now, they thank the world. He said, and because of iniquity or sin or wickedness, shall abound, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax or shall grow cold. You see, we've got to realize something here, church. Because of the actions of people today, if we are not careful, we can let our love relationship with God get colder and colder and colder. We must keep that fire burning if we are to keep going on for Jesus. It's not just about doing all kinds of works and everything, and that's great. And I mean, I see churches that, oh, they love to advertise their sending, they'll give to 20 or 30 different missionaries, they're doing this, they're doing that. They've got this ministry going on, they got that ministry going on. And I'm not knocking any of that if you are the pastor of a big church. Please understand, I'm not knocking that stuff. But what I am saying is how is our Lord love relationship with Jesus Christ? If God was to come and visit you today, would he tell you, Clark, well done? good and faithful servant, or will you say you have left, you, you, I've got something against you, you've forgotten, you left your first love. You see, I've seen ministers who have fallen into sin. There was a well-known minister back in the 80s that fell into sin. And in his own testimony, he, he made the comment. Uh, he said, what happened? Oh, he said he knew how to do ministry, he knew how to prepare a message. He knew how to preach, he knew how to do church work that he was supposed to be doing. He even knew how to say a prayer. But he said he got to the place. He said a prayer, but he no longer prayed. He read about his Bible, but at the same time he didn't read his Bible. It was all just... I'm doing this more out of habit than out of a relationship. Just think about it, a married couple. How does a married couple that is so madly in love with each other after 20, 30 years go, to a, go for divorce? Because somewhere along the line, see the number one cause for divorce is not an extramarital affair, not finances, not children problems, not none of these problems. Although that can do this number one reason can lead to that. But the number one reason cause for divorce is communication breakdown. They couple stops talking. Or they may talk at each other. They may say some things, but really they have stopped communicating. The same way it is with our relationship with Jesus Christ. 
You see, we must get to the place that it's not just about a ministry. It's not just about doing all these things that we've seen ministers fall today, and it just breaks my heart. But what it comes down to is many have lost their first love. And because of losing that first love, they have tried to see, instead of staying over here close to the Lord, they have screwed over a little bit. Want to still, oh, I love you, Jesus, but want to get a little closer to the world. I love you, Jesus, but want to get a little closer to the world. Want to get a little closer, get a little, little farther away. And little by little, they let the world come in, and that love they once had has grown cold. That love that they once they found in their heart has grown cold. But I pray that you and I have the same prayer that Paul had, Philippians 4.10. Paul said the number one goal in his ministry, in his life, and everything was not to build a name for himself, not to build a church, not to build fame and everything else, but he said that I may know him, talking about Jesus, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. Paul said, my number one desire above anything else that I have is to know Jesus. Is that your number one desire today? To know Jesus, to have a love relationship with him, renewed again within you. The problem today with the church I'm going to really get out of here. The number one problem with the church today is we have too many ministers who have lost their love relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, they say they love God, but something is still not there. Oh, they may pray, but they don't spend time talking to the Father. I love another book. Way that this is read, Philipp, uh, Philippians 3 My determination, this is, this is mine, I mean, this is me personally. My determined purpose is, for my determined purpose is, that I may know Him, that I may progressively become more. Deeply and intimately acquainted with Him. Talking about Jesus. Perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of His person. More strongly and more clearly. And that I may in that same way, come to know the power outflowing from His resurrection, which it, it thoughts over believers, and that I may so desire, uh, so share His sufferings, as to be continually transformed in the spirit, into his likeness, even to his death, in the hope. It's your number one desire for them, to know Jesus. It's the number one desire today to have a love for him, that everything else just grows. There used to be a sign, it used to be a sign that Upon rise, upon look boldly into his one 
Christmas grace and the things of this world shall grow strangely dear. I cannot recall the whole song. I'll probably just miss it up. But I challenge you. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Desire to know everything about you. There was a post somebody put it that said, the problem with the church world today is too many want to know his power and not his presence. And I agree with that to an extent. But let me tell you something. When we get his presence, that power will come. When we seek his face, his hand will come with his face. Let pleasing him be the greatest desire you and I have, you and I have. Friend, time is getting short. Jesus is about to return. Don't let it be said of you that you have left the first love. If you have never, if you have received, if you have never received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, I tell you to do so right now. Ask him to forgive you for your sins and receive you. But if you have received him, but you have found little things kind of coming in. And you have kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of got a little farther, farther away from where it used to be with him. It's way over there with the same. It ain't his fault, it's your fault. I challenge you to the first person. We repent. And we ask God to renew that fire. Store up that fire in you one more time. It might come to know him. Father, I thank you for your word. Father, I pray that this message will encourage someone's heart today. Father, that they will draw closer to you. That they will become more like you. Father, that they will come to a place that the number one goal in life is to know you. The power of the way the wit and the fellowship of the suffering. Oh, Father, that we could be made into your image, to be more and more like you. Father, I give you praise today for all you're about to do. Father, bless each and every one who hears this. Now, Father, I ask you to stretch forth thy hand, touch those that are sick in body, minister to them, let healing flow to them today. Father, I pray to God you would just minister by your power. Father, I speak healing in the name of Jesus and deliverance by your authority. Now, Father, we thank you for all you're about to do in Jesus' most holy name. Amen and amen. Friend, we love you. If we may pray with you, then please send us a message. Uh, if you've got a Bible question, send a message. I mean, we, we are here to try to help you to grow closer to Jesus. That's the number one goal, is growing closer to Him. May God richly bless you with our prayer. God bless you and amen.